Hello and welcome to the Starting Sister series, the series where we go from your first purchase to your first 2000 point army list and everything in between for the Sisters of Battle, also known as the Adeptus Sororitas. In this video we'll be expanding on the concepts of the 500 point army lists and building 1000 point army lists for the Sisters of Battle. As always remember these lists are just for theoretical purposes intended to give you a starting point as opposed to being a hard and fast rule in terms of what you can take in order to be completely optimal. At the end of the day you should always consider how to optimize and improve these lists for your needs and play style. So let's get into the lists. The first list we'll look at is the budget list, being composed of a battalion detachment and the order of the Valorous Heart. And as we're a battalion, we're required to take two HQ choices. For our first HQ choice, we have taken a Candace, which is the staple HQ choice. We have made her the Warlord and have given her an Inferno Pistol, as well as a Null Rod, because the Null Rod is now free. For her Relic, we have given her an Iron Surplus of Saint Estiel. And you can also go with a Mantle of Ophelia. Either one is pretty good. The Mantle is going to be better when you need a higher invulnerable save, while the Iron surplus is going to give her a much higher toughness profile than she would otherwise have. For her trait, we'll give her the Beacon of Faith, which is normally the trait we default to. And then for our second HQ, we'll just keep it simple and take a second Canis, giving her a Blessed Blade and an Inferno Pistol. These two weapons will make her more of a shooting and melee threat as a whole and let her perform a more aggressive function within the list, while the first Canis is all about survivability and generating miracle dice. Now for troops, we'll do what normally is done and keep it rather simple. We'll take three basic units of five sisters, giving them no no upgrades except for the simulacrum as it is now free and you might as well take it in every situation that you can because sometimes you'll find yourself in a situation where you want to use miracle dice on more than one unit and it's never bad to have some free upgrades. In fact this should just be considered a standard item on most squads whenever it's an option. Moving along from Troops to Elites, the list has decided to take two squads of seven Celestians. Both squads will have a similar composition, with each one having a Simulacrum, one Melta Gun, and one Combi Melta on the Superior. This will give them a lot of firepower as well as resilience, as they'll be next to the Canis, and they'll be able to advance and shoot, as the Melta Guns are assault weapons. For a third elite choice, we have taken an Imagifier and have taken Tales of the Stoic as the litany for the Imagifier, and we've also used one command point to buy Heron in the making in order to give her Indomitable Belief so that when she escorts those Celestians along with the Canis, she can make them even more resilient by ignoring armor penetration of 1 and 2 on enemy shooting, as well as giving them a bonus to their Invulnerable save off of Indomitable Belief. This will make the Celestians an incredibly tough unit to take out, and as a result, you can use them as an anvil for a hammer and anvil strategy. Now that you have your anvil in the form of selections, you can start considering what your hammer will be. For the hammer, the heavy support slot fills this role, and in the heavy support slot we have taken two squads of two mortifiers, each squad being composed of two mortifiers, and one of those mortifiers being an anchorite to give it a slightly better normal save, and for the weapons we'll give them flails and heavy bolters. Finally for the last heavy support slot we have taken one squad of five retributors, giving them four multi-meltas, and we've taken a combi flamer on the superior, so that in the case she ever ends up in the range of both those firing profiles, she can give the squad Holy Trinity as she has a Bolter and Flamer weapon and the rest of the squad has a Multi weapon. Now to soak up some points we have taken two Armarium Cherubs on the Retributors which are perfectly fine units because they can allow the Retributors to shoot again and if you're targeting a priority target the Cherubs are incredibly good at helping the Retributors take out the target in a single shooting phase. In total this army list ends up being 958 points meaning that you have plenty of room for some more gear of your choosing and you can throw around some more Meltas on the Celestians or Storm Bolters on whichever units you like as you'll be able to use a Storm Bolters on Dominions in the future when you expand your lists once again, and Storm Bolters are always good points filler because they're so cheap and they're even perfectly fine on basic sisters. So as such, you have a lot of options in terms of what you do with those last 42 points, and you can get rather creative with what you do with them. If it was up to me, I'd probably take some Melta weapons on the Celestians, though I can definitely see justification giving special weapons to the basic sisters in this situation, or giving some more special war gear to the Celestian superiors, although they already have a combi Melta. In terms of budget for this list, as this is intended to be a low cost list, you only need three additional kits on top of the original budget list, but for those who haven't watched the 500 point video, in total you'll need three boxes of sisters, two boxes of mortifiers, and a box of retributors. Though if you only buy these boxes you will have to do some conversions, as the retributor kits only come with two multi-meltas and you'll want a total of four, so what you can do is you can use the heavy flamers and cut off the ends, replacing them with some melta barrels and that will give you the extra two multi-meltas that you need, while also giving you some extra components to build other sisters in the future. Now out of your basic sisters you'll need to convert two cannons and an Imagifier in order to complete this list. Though all of these conversions are rather simple and you shouldn't have much trouble with this as really you're just combining a couple bits to make the models stand out a little more than they 
normally would. In fact, you might even be able to get away with using a heavy flamer as a melta, but the easiest and safest thing to do is just to cut off the barrels and replace them with those multi melta barrels. You can even make some of your own multi melta barrels if you find that you don't have enough from the kits that you currently own. One thing you can do in order to not necessarily save money, but to make future expansion a little bit easier for you, is to buy another basic sisters box instead of the retributors if you're willing to do some work into making them retributors, as they look rather similar, but you won't have any multi meltas in that case, so you will have to convert all four instead of just two. And what this will give you is an additional five models for a total of five dollars extra, and they'll allow you to add some models to your list in order to cover those 42 points that you had remaining. Now, in total, if you're in the United States and you buy this list off of the Games Workshop web store, you can expect to pay a total of $355, which is a rather reasonable cost considering how much you're getting, though definitely when you look at something like the combat patrol boxes that other armies get, it does feel a little bit high, but at least it's some way to save some money, and hopefully in the future sisters do get a combat patrol box, as that would really let them kind of build in a much less expensive way than this even. For the second list, we've decided to go back to a Bloody Rose order list, and in this case, it will actually be a patrol detachment as opposed to a battalion, simply because we have enough options to fill up the points, and don't necessarily want to be taking two additional troop slots in order to go up to a battalion detachment, so we're not really constricted for space in this situation. If anything, we're probably benefited by saving that 110 points that we do on troops, as it allows us to take some options in other types of unit slots. However, you can definitely increase this to a battalion detachment, and simply take two more units of sisters while dropping one of the other options within the list. For the patrol detachment HQ choice, we've decided to take a cannonist, which will make our Becky, and in this case we'll give her a null rod, we'll give her righteous rage off of heroin in the making, and we'll give her the relic beneficence. Now for those of you who know she has heroin in the making instead of having just a warlord trait, that's because we've actually taken a second HQ choice even though this is a patrol detachment, and our second HQ choice will be Celestine, who will be our warlord, and as such she'll have beacon of faith as her trait. And in addition to this, we've given her Gemini Superior, simply because Gemini is rather good, though you can always drop the Gemini in order to take other units. However, when you do buy a Celestine model, you get the Gemini no matter what, so it's not like it really changes the price of the list in terms of dollars, and the Gemini is a perfectly fine model for what it does, especially when Celestine can heal or bring the Gemini back, and the Gemini can tank for Celestine. Now for troops, we've just taken a basic unit of five battle sisters with a simulacrum, and this is the main benefit of going with a patrol detachment versus going with a battalion, as we can keep the basic sisters rather low and open up the points to take units in other slots that are more exciting than the basic sisters. Now for the lead slot, we've decided to take two units of seven Repentia. This is a rather simple choice as the Repentia are incredibly good and at a thousand points, they're going to have more targets to take apart that are a little more beefy than they would in 500 points. So the power level definitely goes up in a thousand point game in comparison to the 500 point games. Though in this case, we've also taken two Rhinos in order to transport the Repentia as well as our Becky as the Rhino gives all these units a lot more survivability and mobility in order for them to get into combat. Though even with the Rhino, it's definitely tricky to use them simply because of how much your army is within those two rhinos, though having a Celestine is a big enough threat in many cases to distract your opponents, and this isn't all you have in the army considering you still have fast attack and heavy support choices, and in terms of fast attack, there are two units of five Seraphims, with two Seraphims having dual Inferno pistols in each of those squads, giving you a decent amount of Inferno pistol firepower, and you can definitely set up one of the units in Deep Strike while keeping the other on the table, or you can set up both units within Deep Strike as well, considering the rather fast moving units units and pack a rather serious punch. It's definitely a nice addition to the list, but if I was looking to cut anything from the list, I would definitely be cutting one of the Seraphim squads before anything else. For the heavy support choice, we've taken two Mortifiers, making one an Anchorite and giving them both Bolters and Flails, and this is because Mortifiers are incredibly powerful and resilient, and especially in lower point games, the Mortifier power level is incredibly high, so you can always take more Mortifiers by dropping some of those Seraphims, as it does become kind of awkward taking so many Seraphims within a thousand point game, considering you only have so much Deep Strike that you can do, as well as being somewhat limited on command points even at this point. Though the Seraphims still aren't bad, and they can definitely be a lot of fun to play, they're definitely not the strongest unit within the army, and they can be a little bit awkward within smaller games as a whole. In total, this list ends up being 992 points, which means you can take a special pistol on one of the superiors, and then give a storm bolter to one of your regular sisters for 3 points. This will bring up the list to a total of 1000 points exactly, which is rather nice since you've used up all of your points as efficiently as you possibly can. This list may struggle a little in cases where it can't engage easily, or the enemy has a lot of objective secured units that can't survive long enough to shut you out of the game, simply because you don't have that much objective secured, and even though you put on a lot of damage, sometimes units can kind of bog you down, though there'll be very few units that can survive the Repentia and Mortifiers coming in with the amount of damage that they can put out in melee. And as such, you have so many heavy hitters that once they reach combat, they'll devour enemies quickly in most cases. And as mentioned, you can also drop things like the Seraphim and reduce some of the other units to take a shooting threat like Retributors in order to shoot at 
infinite tanks at a range, or if you drop the Repentia down a bit, you can even take an Emulator for a smaller Repentia squad to ride instead of a Rhino, and the Emulator can actually be rather good considering how much firepower it is. And in addition to that, in small games, a unit of 5 Repentia might be good enough as there are less efficient targets for maximum units of Repentia, even at 1000 point games, because you don't really see those perfect targets until you start hitting 2000 point games. And once you hit those games, you can have up to 3 squads of maximum Repentia, simply because they have so many options in terms of what they can take out while making up their points for taking those units out. In total, this will cost you $505 from Games Workshop in the USA. You do end up with 4 extra Repentia, 4 extra Sisters, and an extra Gemini Superior, so you're definitely ending up with a good amount of units for future buildouts, which does make the cost more tolerable considering you have so many units that you can use in the future once you do expand to 1500 or even 2000 points. For our third list, we've gone once again with a patrol detachment, and in this case we've taken the order of our Martyred Lady, as we want this to be a more of a shooting list, and to begin with, as a patrol detachment, we are only required to have one HQ choice, which we've taken Junity Rita for, as she's a great buff and screening unit for any shooting list, however she is not our warlord, simply because of how restricted she is in terms of what she can take as a warlord, so we'll leave that for a different character within the army. And once again, as a patrol detachment, the main benefit is that you only have to take one troop choice, in this case we've taken one squad of five sisters with nothing special besides a simulacrum simply because the simulacrum is free and you might as well take it when you can. For the elite choice we have taken an imagifier and we've given her tales of the stoic and we've made her our warlord giving her the book of saint lucius and indomitable belief which will stack with junith Rita's ability making anything near both of them incredibly resilient so in this case we're stacking junith and the imagifier who's the warlord of this army list in order to protect a big shooting threat that we'll get to soon enough. Though before we go to the shooting components we definitely want something to protect those shooting units so we've taken a second elite choice and in this case it'll be 10 Zephyrm as they can move around the board rather quickly while having a reasonably threatening melee profile so that they can head off different units before they reach the shooting component or simply move around and take objectives while clearing out enemy squads that might be holding objectives. The Zephyrm are definitely a great unit and they're a fantastic choice for a model that you can own and have some fun with as you go along. And after the lead choice, we have the fast attack slot. And for the fast attack slot, we'll take two squads of six dominions, giving each squad a simulacrum because it's free, and giving each squad four storm bolters, as up to four dominions can take special weapons. Unfortunately, the superior can no longer take a storm bolter, which is rather sad, as I would have given her one too if that was an option, and that would have brought them up to a total of five storm bolters, which would have been even better, considering the reason we're giving them storm bolters is so that they can use the stratagem blessed bolts, which I find to be a rather fun stratagem, as it brings up the storm bolter shooting to almost the profile of a heavy bolt though for a significantly less points cost. And it's something I hadn't really covered when I covered the Dominions, and sadly I did try to make this list a Sacred Rose list, however it didn't seem particularly good, and the more I tried to make it, the more forced it felt, so I ended up going back to the Order of the Martyred Lady, and unfortunately it does show kind of the limitation of some of the orders that the sisters have access to, which is rather sad because I would have liked to have seen some of the other orders get some love, though maybe that will change in the future as several new units are coming out, and it will be interesting to see if it's just the two units that have already been previewed, or if there's a lot more units that will shore up some of the issues with some of the orders because right now it does feel somewhat limited in that sense. Anyway moving on we'll go to the heavy support slot. In this case the heavy support slot is two units of five retributors with four multi-meltas each. These two units will be the core of your shooting and the units that Junith and the Magifier will be escorting helping them stay alive while they put out a ton of damage and move across the table as they do not suffer any penalties for carrying heavy weapons thanks to their special abilities as retributors. Now finally since this is a patrol detachment and we've already filled up all the slots except for the basic troops and one of the HQ choices, though we really don't have any need for either of those, and we can't really take any other units, though we can take some transports, and in this case we'll take an emulator, giving it the twin heavy bolter turret, so that you can have three extra heavy bolters shooting at whatever you choose, although you can also take the heavy flamer if you think that'll be better in your situation. It really does come down to what armies you're playing against, and in total this list ends up being 988 points, which means you do have some extra war gear that you can take, whether it be some combi flamers on the retributor squad, or some special weapons on the basic sister unit, as that's always an option when you're looking to eat up some points. You can also take some special war gear on the Dominion Superior if you're so inclined. And to build this list, you'll need quite a few different kits. Those kits being a Junith Rita kit, two boxes of basic sisters, two boxes of retributors, and don't forget, in those boxes you get a total of four multi-meltas, so you'll have to convert an additional four multi-meltas out of heavy flamers and melta barrels that you can either get off of unused melta guns or simply make as they're rather easy to make. You'll also need two boxes of Zephyrm to get ten Zephyrm total, and one emulator box that you should build in such a way so that you can always use it as a rhino in the future if you're not using it as an emulator because the emulator is somewhat of a niche choice. 
and you'll only use it in certain cases, while the Rhino tends to be a little more prevalent. In total, the cost of this list will be $460, and the emulator can be used as a Rhino in the future, as mentioned previously, so try to build it accordingly in order to have more options. You can even buy a Rhino and build an emulator turret out of different bits, using the different heavy bolters and things like that you have left over. However, it's probably easier to buy an emulator and turn it into a Rhino than it is to buy a Rhino and turn it into an emulator. In any case, the choice is yours, and I know a lot of people really enjoy the hobby side of the game, so it's definitely a good opportunity to work on a model in both situations. Now for the fourth list we'll continue being a little bit creative and we'll go with the order of the Argent Shroud taking a spearhead detachment and as this is a spearhead detachment with a rather off the wall order this means this is a monsters list that doesn't really care about the order and is simply using an order to gain a little bit of a benefit that other lists wouldn't be able to really go off of. Now even in a spearhead detachment we do need an HQ choice though there are plenty of HQ choices that are very good even in a monsters list. For our first HQ choice we've taken a Celestine and made her a warlord giving her beacon of faith which is perfectly fine as a warlord ability and we've taken two gemini superior and these are mostly to eat up some points because this list ends up being a little bit short without them however i'm sure you can find replacements for them if you're so inclined now for the second hq choice we've taken a canonis and kept her as the normal loadout with a chain sword giving her a null rod because it's free and for the relic we've taken either mantle of saint ophelia or the iron surplus as we did in the first list and we've given her a heroine in the making to give her indomitable belief and the reason for this canonis is we've taken some elite in this list and for elites we've taken two squads of six celestians each squad having a superior a simulacrum and a single multi melta in order to give this list a little bit of firepower on a unit that's incredibly resilient and can reroll their shooting even if they moved with that heavy weapon thanks to being escorted by the canis who ends up buffing their sacred shield save with her indomitable belief and the celestians can act as a bodyguard to the canis as needed and as this is a spearhead attachment we've skipped the fast attack and troop choices going straight to the heavy support choice in this case and for the heavy support choice we've taken three squads of three mortifiers each squad of mortifiers having one of the mortifiers be an anchorite and all of the mortifiers are armed with heavy bolters and flails this gives you a lot of mortifiers to work with who have incredibly good shooting and melee as a whole while being an incredibly threatening unit to any opponent that faces them in fact if you really wanted to you could drop the canis and the celestians and take a couple of squads of penitent engines as additional mortifier bodies because while they might not be as good as the mortifiers as a whole they're still perfectly fine and they can still carry flails and flamers in order to deal out some serious damage alongside the mortifiers in total the points cost of this list is 995 so to eat up those extra five points you can take a pistol on either the celestian superior or the canonist this list is definitely a brutal one but is limited by the model count and the canonist and celestians are just there for some fire support while being a tough unit to crack and with argent shroud they can advance and keep up with the rest of the army while still shooting and as mentioned with the canonist being around the celestians she does help mitigate the minus one to hit on the heavy weapons if they've moved and as a whole the order of the argent shroud really only works here because you have so few units that actually belong to an order and you can use the conviction of the argent shroud in order to just help your celestians advance while you're not really worried about what order you're in in fact if you drop the celestians and the canis it really doesn't matter which order you take as you'll be running mortifiers and penitent engines which don't have orders to begin with so it won't matter at all and now for the required kits You'll need one Celestine kit, two boxes of basic sisters in order to create Celestians and a Canis from, and a total of four Mortifier boxes. And the total cost of this list, if you buy it in the United States Games Workshop store, will be $415 and the possible loss of your friendships. Though joking aside, the dollar cost really isn't that bad considering how many large models you're getting within those Mortifiers, and it does feel somewhat less expensive comparatively to other armies that use a lot of large models such as the Mortifiers, so at least that's a little bit of a silver lining. And more so, I don't think that this this list is that powerful but it can have some boom bust games and is more for a fun build than a serious one at this time if you take a list like this alongside another army you can definitely make it really powerful with some fire support considering how much work the mortifiers can do alongside a serious gun line and i've seen some lists out there that utilize mortifiers alongside other armies to great success so it's definitely not something new that i'm coming up with but it's definitely something that's very powerful anyway thank you for watching if you enjoyed this video please like subscribe and share as it really does help the channel out and i'd like to to thank the patrons for supporting the channel they're really awesome people thank you so much for all the support and as always thank you for watching and have a great day bye